everyone, this is Mike with Real Dead, and today we are going to review Terrifier 3. I've been waiting on this for a very long time, and man, me and my son were excited to go see this. Unfortunately, we were on a cruise, which I guess that's a good thing, but it was also a bad thing because it just so happened that the uh, 11th, when this came out, we were on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean, and we could not go see this. So we waited till we got home, and we went on Monday night, last night, and uh, Hey, this is my thoughts on it. We're going to go spoiler free at first for a couple minutes and then dive in some deep spoilers on this movie. So uh, if you've already seen this before, maybe fast forward to when we start talking about spoilers. If you've not, I'll put something here saying spoilers and you can cut it off. So, um, hey, so this was a much, uh, much anticipated movie. You know, one of my top three movies um, I was waiting for this year. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the. Rotten score on this, 74 from the critics, 89 from the audience. And um, I'm going to tell you my score a little later on. Uh, it may shock you a little bit in a negative way, or it could be positive. I don't know. But, hey, I'm a diehard terrifier. I've met uh, Elliot Fulham and Lauren Lavera at horror conventions before. I got their autographs. They're great people. I love the franchise. I like, uh, you know, the Hallow's Eve with Art the Clown. Uh, the Ninth Circle, uh, and then number two, and then now we've seen number three. So let me go ahead and read the uh, synopsis of this from Rotten Tomatoes. After surviving Art the Clown's Halloween massacre, Sienna and her brother are struggling to rebuild their shattered lives. As the holiday season approaches, they try to embrace the Christmas spirit and leave the horrors of the past behind. But just when they think they're safe, Art the Clown returns determined to, determined to turn their holiday cheer into a new nightmare. The festive season quickly unravels as Art unleashes his twisted brand of terror, proving that no holiday is safe. So let me say that right up front. Um, this may be a spoiler. It may not be a spoiler. I'm just going to say it because I feel like you need to know this ahead of time. Anybody that's on this screen in this movie is not safe. Anyone, everyone is not safe. Um, this movie, in my opinion, and uh, Damien Leone did, did a great job with this, uh, is the goriest movie I've ever seen. Um, I can't think of one that's more gory. I know the original Hellraiser was you know, pretty good. Um, um, uh, God, what was the name of the old 1970-something movie? The Holocaust uh, was pretty rough. You know, it was kind of... Um, uh, live video footage, but this man, this, if you thought two was bad, this one tops that one as far as the gore. Uh, if you love Art the Clown, and if you're watching part three, you, I'm sure you have a connection with him, you're going to love Art the Clown. Art the, Art the Clown is great in this movie. Sienna character, Lauren Lavera, is great in this movie. Um, Elliot Fulham, this may be a little bit of spoiler on the spoiler free part. I wish I saw more of him in this movie. Uh, but there are some good characters in this movie. Some friends of Elliot Fulham's uh, in college are, are good characters. You got the new family um, that is the aunt and uncle of uh, Sienna and Jonathan. They're in this this movie as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, definitely uh, worth seeing. If you love the blood and gore, it's definitely worth seeing on the big screen. Let me say that up front. Now, in saying all this, um, I had high expectations and. Um, I was going to do the review when I got back from the movie last night and I did not. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I sat on it 24 hours to really soak up and marinate everything uh, that was in this movie. So on the spoiler part, I'll be able to go over, over some of those things that really um, that I liked and did not like a little bit more. Um, the, I mean, if again, if you're a Terrifier fan, I, I do think you should see this at the movie theater. You can wait. It'll probably be, you know, right around Christmas time. It'll probably come out on some kind of media that you can, you know, rent if you wanted to. Uh, this was actually after week one. It topped the Joker, and I think it brought home eighteen point two or eighteen point three million the first week, which is one of the first times that you know that a horror movie and an independent horror movie uh, took out some of these big movies that are out right now. So it was a number one. Uh, movie the first weekend that opened up. And I think it'll do real well this week too. Um, 
some of the key actors in here, uh, as, as you can see, are um, you got Damien Leone, uh, you got David Howard Thornton as Arthur Clown, Lauren Lavera, uh, Samantha Scaffody, uh, Chris Jericho's in this, Elliot Fulham, as I mentioned before. Um, Daniel Roebuck plays the uh, uh, Santa Claus in this movie. Margaret Florence. Uh, Antonella Rose plays Gabby, the uh, young girl in this movie. Uh, and then you got some other you know, actors as well. But I would say this movie overall is definitely worth seeing at the theater. And now I'm going to give you my score. Whenever I saw this originally at the movie theater and came home, I was a little disappointed, to be honest with you. I can't go into why I was disappointed until this, I get to the spoilers. Um, I just thought the storyline went a little wacky on this towards the end of it. Let me just put it that way. I won't go into details of why I thought that. I'll do that more in the spoiler part. Um, so I originally last night when I got home, I was like, this might be a six. Now, five being average, uh, six out of ten for me. But sitting on this overnight and kind of marinated a little bit more in my head, I, I'm going to give it a seven, a seven out of 10. I don't think it's in my top three for the year. Uh, now, as far as gore and Art the Clown, it'd be a 10 out of 10 for me. But uh, as you'll listen if in the spoiler part, I'll tell you for the fifth time what that is. So that's the end of the spoiler free section. And let's get into the spoiler section. Now, listen. I know a lot of you, if you watch this video to this point, you're going to say, man, what's wrong with you, dude? This was a great movie. You know, it should have been an eight or a nine out of 10, 10 out of 10. I've seen people give it that. These were the two things that bothered me just real quick up front. And then we'll go over the details. I took notes uh, of the movie, believe it or not. And I'll go over kind of the, the, the whole kind of the, the whole movie plot um, and some of the kills that happened. Um, but the the kids the, the you know the kids being killed in this movie and it happens this is a spoiler section uh, at the very beginning opening scene uh, you know to me they go like five years previously and you know Art the clown comes in the house little girl sees him um, and th she th you know thinks that Santa Claus on the roof mom says no it's not you're just hearing things and it's Art the clown she catches him open presents he pulls an axe out. He goes upstairs and he demolishes, crunches, chops up um, her brother, who's probably eight or nine years old, maybe 10 at the most, but eight or nine years old. He was half asleep and telling his sister to get out of the room. Uh, now, they don't show any of that, but you hear the bones crunching, the axe hitting him on the bed. Then he goes into the parent's room and he just destroys him, like lays into the dad's neck. I mean, goes gets really graphic with it. And I, I mean, I'm digging that, right? So then the mother runs out and runs uh, by the son's room. And you do see a brief flash of the carnage that he left in that room. And you got intestines, you got a head over here, a foot over here, a leg over here. It was pretty rough. And that really bothered me. Now, listen, it's a horror movie. I get it. Other movies have so that's what made me move this up from a six or seven is just kind of sitting on this overnight and saying, you know what, there's other movies. Halloween has showed kids killed, Salem's Lot recently. There's been other horror movies that shown kids killed. Uh, I just didn't like the graphic part of it. Like, I mean, they to me they could have not shown the the bedroom with the kid and it would have been fine. But again, that's just my opinion. I know some of you hardcore gore people, you're like, man, get over it, dude. This is not church. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um the other scene later on in the movie was the kids getting blown up. They didn't show any of that. You just knew what happened. You see the explosion and the explosion of the the place where Art uh, the Clown is giving out Christmas presents. He snuck on set and uh, started giving all the kids toys and presents. And then one of the kids opens one up and it blows up. And then later on you hear in the movie that, you know, it's five or six kids got killed or five or six dead um, uh people on the scene and then another five or six injured. So you knew what happened. The little boy that opened it up got blown up along with the other little kids. So, um, and they didn't show that and that didn't bother me as bad, but that first scene was showing that flash. And I know this is, you know, this was kind of a lot of the rumors were people were barfing at the first 10 minutes of the movie, blah, blah, blah. I don't think any of that was going to make me barf, but it's just the fact that, you know, it, Hey, I got a 14 year old, I got kids, I, you know, it just seemed a little tough to me. 
Um, and the other thing that I, I wanted to store it down a little bit on it was I thought the story overall got a little out there towards the end of it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Uh, I just want to kind of go through the movie real quick with, um, you know, first of all, I thought this thing showed some tributes to some classic movies. Um, I do think it showed like The Shining. Uh, you can see Art the Clown. There's a scene where he's looking through a door and it's like, you know, Johnny, uh, you know, it's like the Torrance family or Torrance family, whatever their name was. Um, that you saw Black Christmas. There was a scene where he's up in the attic in a rocking chair, uh, kind of rocking back and forth. That reminded me of Black Christmas looking out the window. And then there was, a, to me, a tribute to Psycho. The uh, There's a shower scene in there that we'll talk about here that's pretty rough. Uh, but, yeah, that, uh, Damien, Damien Leone's, one of his favorite movies is Psycho of all time. And I think there's also a little bit of a tribute to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre by having that chainsaw in that scene. So those are the movies I thought it kind of played tribute to. I haven't read interviews where he said he did do that or not with them, but I thought that I picked up on them, and I thought the uh, they were uh, tributes to them. Um, so again, we just went over the opening scene. That's the start of the movie. Uh, there's like a five year back and then five year present. Um, and then you got the two kids, the two adults, uh, that were killed in that scene at, at the, towards the end of that, there's a little girl that hides the little girl that saw him originally. She's hiding in the kitchen in the cupboard. And then art, the clown is real classic art, the clown sitting in a, uh, one of the chairs eating cookies and milk with blood all over him. And then he hears a noise and he opens it up and it's a little girl there. So I take it she was killed too. So that's kind of like four, you know, four people right off the bat, you know, within the first four or five minutes of the movie that's dead. Um, and then after it jumps back to five years um, and you see a cop showing up at, at the scene, uh, you know, kind of going back to the original part two at the end of it. And then there's this gentleman there that's a cop that uh, Art basically takes his head off, or actually he does take his head off, because later on he puts it back on. Uh, but yeah, so uh, then you it goes five years back. Uh, no, at that same time period, you got Art the Clown uh, coming to the, like the mental place where Vicky was at, where she gave birth to his head previously in part two. And then you got Chris Jericho there, and you got the, uh, the um, what is it, the cafe girl, uh, that was in the in number two. She's in there, you know, and, and he's like eating on her and he's got this long part of his neck, you know, you know, there as well. It's just really sick. Vicky's in, you know, Vicky's there, you know, blood all over her. And, and then you got the art, the clown comes and, uh, with a headless art, the clown, uh, he comes over and, um, and, him and Vicky tag team Chris Jericho and just like destroy him, rip his face, his jaw, stick their hand down his mouth and kind of rip him apart. Uh, earlier though, Art the Clown had put on the clown head uh, from the police officer he had killed. And it's kind of funny because, you know, Art the Clown, I, you know, I guess you can't tell if he's black or white or what ethnicity he is, but he puts on this, uh, the cop he killed was a, a black gentleman, I believe, and he had an afro. So he put that head on top of him and it was, it was kind of comical to see Art the Clown's body with another head on his face, but uh, a head on the body, I mean. Um, so then it kind of jumps to a, a time period where Art and Vicky go back to the house and this, like this retreat house. And that's where Art works on all of his, you know, his tools and all of his kind of stuff there. But uh, Vicky goes downstairs into the basement area and she gets into the tub and then she's like slits, you know, slits her wrist. It looks like both of them. And she kind of bleeds out in the bathtub and it gets all nasty. And then that's kind of how it is. She's like out, you don't know if she's dead or not. And then they show art upstairs in a rocking chair. Well, I was kind of saying a throwback to black Christmas. And then they show like five years later or present day. And art, the clown has cobwebs all over him. Vicky looks like she's been there forever. Uh, there's these two guys that come in to dem demolish the house and one goes upstairs, one goes downstairs. Um, the guy uh, uh, downstairs, uh, Vicky takes a, the same piece of glass that she, you know, cut her wrist with and she just, she takes it to the guy and kills him. And then upstairs, the guy is looking at art, the panel up close 
and man, he, he kills him as well, but he takes a, um, kind of like it's a, a, like a case cutter and then like splits his head open and just like peels him like a, a tomato or potato. I mean, he just peels his head. I mean, it's pretty gory and pulls it down over his face. That kind of defaces him as well. So again, blood and gore galore. Uh, man, our, earlier I didn't say this, but when he killed the mother of the four originally at Christmas time, I mean, he like chopped, you know, her arm off. It's, it's brutal kills. It's not just a one shot and over, but then he gets her in the back of the head too. That's pretty gross. All right. So also during this time period, Sienna is uh, in like a mental health place, wellness center. She gets out. She's going to go stay with her aunt and uncle. And they have a little daughter named Gabby or Gabrielle. Uh, she's a big part of this movie. Also, uh, Jonathan is going to college. So he's there with college roommates. Uh, his college roommate kind of reminds me of like a Spicoli type guy. He's a partier, ladies man. He's got this you know girlfriend in his opinion that's hot. She has a podcast and she's big into true crime and horror stuff. You find out later on, she says that, you know, she's a big fan of Jonathan and Sienna and wanted them to come on her podcast. So Art the Clown goes into this bar. That sounds like a joke, right? Art the Clown goes into this bar and he's just like tickled to see Santa Claus. And the, like the bartender's like, hey, you know, get him out of here. Why is he dressed up that way? And the Santa Claus guy's like, you know, let him let him be in here. There are two hot girls before he goes in there that are all over Art the Clown or Santa Claus actually. And then Art runs into him, but luckily they they survive. <laughs> but um, when Art gets in there, he's like, you know, very animated with uh, Santa Claus, wanting to be Santa Claus, wanting to, you know, play jokes with him, pulls out his horn and beeps it. And uh, next thing you know, you know, one thing leads to another and uh, he gives him a shot. He pays for a shot of uh, liquor for him. Art tastes it and then spits it in his face because it's, you know, it's, it's liquor. And he's, I guess he's not used to that. I don't know what Art Clown drinks, but uh, so it pissed the clown off. I mean, it pissed, pissed Santa Claus off, pissed the bartender and everybody off. And they're like, get him out of here. Well, the next thing you know, he's been sitting on Santa's lap, you know, like a kid. He pisses on Santa Claus. Yeah. He pissed on Santa Claus. Uh, so, um, Art the Clown digs into his black bag earlier and handed the guy the uh, photo ID of the um, the African-American or black police officer. Uh, and they were all laughing about it. I oh, just let him drink. Well, then he pulls out his gun and he shoots the bartender and shoots one of the friends there uh, in the head, which to me, that's, you know, uh, you, most slashers, you don't see that. And I think this is another example of David um, Leone just like saying, hey, I'm going to do what I want to do, not what typical slashers do. I don't care. I'm going to kill kids. I'm going to shoot people. I'm going to do whatever I want to. And I get that. And that's very ballsy. And I, and I give him an A plus on that. Um, but then he takes Santa Claus. And earlier he had created in his in his like retreat place, a uh, took like a fire extinguisher and added nitrogen to it, liquid nitrogen. And he earlier was messing with rats and freezing them and then hitting them with hammers and stuff. And then, you know, then feed them to the other rats. Well, he does this to this client, to the, uh, he does this to the uh, Santa Claus and like bust up his hands. And then he turns around and freezes his face. He did his legs, uh, his feet. And he does this to his face at the end. And then he, he starts hitting it with a hammer. And then he, he basically pulls his face off and, um, and and has a little beard part, which Art the Clown keeps that because earlier the Santa Claus said a real clown has a beard. So Art the Clown saves that later on to put on him himself. But he turns around and then takes a, uh, a carrot and sticks it in as his nose. You know, and the guy's still eyes are still working. And he's like, ah, you know, making noises. But it got very brutal when he killed off Santa Claus. And uh, then he put, you know, he put on the Santa Claus suit and then he has a Santa Claus suit on Santa Claus suit on for the rest of the movie. Um, so uh, th there's also this scene throughout this movie where like Sienna has a diary and this little Gabby girl, the little girl in the house, she sneaks around and has, you know, doesn't tell all the truth, but she reads everything on Sienna. So she knows she's seeing things. She's seeing art, the clown, she's seeing, 
all this evil reads what really happened to her. And she starts asking her is, you know, is this real or not? And Sienna's like, no, it's not. I really didn't see that stuff. I'm just writing it down. But she knows, kind of knows the story. And, and this little girl is probably nine or 10 herself, maybe 11. Um, she's young. She may be eight, nine, 10, 11, something like that. I'm not good at ages like that, but, uh, so she's, you know, she's throughout the movie. She kind of idolizes Sienna. She thinks she's a you know, real badass, which she is. And, um, but yeah, so then, uh, also during this time period, um, they go Christmas shopping and Sienna starts hearing the clown cafe song and sees art the clown there or maybe she got it like a vision of it it's kind of hard to tell what she really saw but in other words it messed her up really bad she needed to leave and then when she gets home uh that's right after that after she leaves that's where the scene where art the clown comes on the set of santa claus the other santa claus was taking a break and then he hands out all these presents the kids out of his black bag and ends up giving you know Dawes to little girls and gives this little boy a box. And next thing he opens it up and it blows up. And then when she's back home with her family, she hears that on the news. Her uncle is playing it and she hears on the news. And then she tells Jonathan, Hey, he's got to get there. Uh, now what she also had talked to him earlier about was getting the sword that her dad had made. And during this time period, you hear a little bit more of the story of the lore, uh, that her dad actually drew her, her, uh, angel, warrior outfit and her dad said it you know that that person can kill 10 times more than astro man and that this was a ba person you know and he also tried to hand her a picture she wanted a picture of it and he drew it and then tried to hand it to her and he he it's like kind of like he got a vision of what was going to happen in the future and he didn't want to turn it over to her but he finally did so i think there's more lore on that that will come up probably in part four uh then you saw the glimpse of you know, you seen on the on the trailer preview of where like this like uh, Mary Magdalene or like this like uh, angelic person, and they had like a chain to like a demonic person, and that person was beating the sword, and that's kind of kind of like uh, I don't know if that was when the sword was made, but that's you know that's what that happened. But she did tell Jonathan that she had buried the sword at the terrifier. So during this time period, they don't show it, but she went and got it, brought it back, and she put it underneath the family Christmas tree. Uh, her, the um, Gabby knew she did that because she opened up the box and saw that that was in there, and she tried to rewrap it back. You find that out later on. Um, so Art blows up the kids. So five or six, you know, people died there, and five or six were injured. Um, so that's the second time kids were killed in it, um, and then his true crime friends are like wanting to have this, uh, you know, the girlfriend of his, his roommate was into true crime stuff. And she wanted to have Sienna and Jonathan on the show. And then they so happened to be at a restaurant together or a cafe or having coffee or something. And then this girl asked Sienna, you know, to basically come on the show. Sienna goes off on her. The other girl didn't really, you know, just like, I can't believe she's upset at me about Sienna just totally went off on her, which she should have. Um, so then this, this girlfriend of the roommate tells the roommate like, Hey, you got to get, you know, Jonathan on the show for me and I'll do anything for you. So they go into, uh, they start making out the next thing you know, they're in a shower and this is where the, the, it gets really rough, but art, the clown comes in there. Well, number one, I thought was hilarious is he went and took a piss and he's just sitting there like jingling around and shaking his stuff, you know, pissing in the urinal. And uh, earlier he had heard her make a comment about how she wanted to be close to him and feel his breath and know what it was like to be around true evil. Well, she, she gets it here in a second. So next thing you know, Art the Clown pulls out the chainsaw and he goes up to the uh, glass of it and he breaks through it with the chainsaw and he starts cutting them both up. I won't go into too many details. Uh, he does cut the woman, uh, the female around the breast you know, across the chest and opens her up in the middle and her, you know, intestines and stuff are falling out and he's cutting off her fingers. He hits the guys, I think fingers too. They come off. Then he hits him below the knee and the guy's like trying to crawl away while he's, uh, the guy's trying to crawl away while Art's finishing off his, 
uh, girlfriend. And then when Art is finished with her, and it's really, really gory, I'm telling you, just blood everywhere. Uh, then he turns around, the guy's laying on his stomach naked, trying to, you know, draw, drag himself away. Art grabs his leg, which has already been cut, and just pulls his leg off uh, below the knee. You, it's like kind of a slow-mo of it. It looks gro gross and gruesome, but he like throws it over to the side. And then he takes the chainsaw with the guy still alive. And it's kind of, I guess, a, a throwback to number one. He takes that chainsaw cranked up and goes right between his ass cheeks. I'll start all the way up his, and they get in there with angle shots. And you're seeing uh, balls and stuff, <laughs> taints and it all. You're seeing it all. And he is sawing him up the middle from the backside. And it is gruesome. Um, so that's the big shower scene, I believe. There was another shower scene earlier where uh, Vicky, you know, killed the other guy in the in the retreat home or whatever, like the, the hangout area. Uh, but, yeah, this was the big shower scene with the, the two college students. And uh, it was nothing you'll forget. And it's, it's pretty rough. Again, extremely gory. Um, so they also talk about, at some point right through here, they're talking about a little bit earlier about how – evil like this they basically come out and say that uh you know jonathan wrote a letter to sienna saying that this evil or these are demons that are trying to come into people and they only come into evil people like truly evil people so that's the why this evil and and it's kind of i think there may be a little bit of dante's peak involved in this but uh you know she is a the dad she's an angel warrior is what he drew for his daughter and the sword is for her. And these demons are coming, trying to come into uh, or came into art, the clown and trying to come into other people as well. So the demons are in Vicky who was in the original first one where he, you know, he ate her face off basically or, or ripped her face off. Um, but they're trying, you know, they're in them and that's why they're killing all these people. I mean, it's, it's like a demon possession or demons are in them. Um, so, I will say all this. I thought around this part when you start seeing the evil and stuff in this movie towards the end, I thought it got a little bit out there. In my, just in my opinion, I didn't think it was quite as good as two. I like two overall better movie than three at this point. I do want to see three again at the theater, and I may go see it within the next week or two before it leaves to see, you know, see if I like it a little better after the initial shock and all. Um, but I thought the CGI was not that great with the eyes. I mean, that's about the only CGI I saw was it looked like the and they made their eyes light up, like, you know, uh, Vicky's and then Sienna that was trying to get the evil in her. Uh, she wouldn't give up, but her eyes lit up as well. I just thought that looked a little cheesy in my opinion. Um, so also this is the scene where, uh, the aunt, I mean, the uncle was supposed to go get Jonathan from school and you could tell the person, the art, the clown or Vicky through their voice to make it sound like Jonathan to come get me. And it really wasn't. Well, then all of a sudden art shows up at the house that, uh, Sienna's aunt and Gabby is at. And when you come around, all of a sudden you see the dad has been, I think his name is Jess. I may be wrong on that, but, uh, his, he has been decapitated and his head is the topper of the Christmas tree and his body is up against the wall and it's arch written in blood, ho, ho, ho on it. Uh, so when Sienna and Gabby and the, the, the aunt come downstairs and see that, then, you know, they're freaking out. Next thing you know, they get hit, they wake up and they're, they're tied up to the chairs. And what they do next is, you know, again, it's very graphic. They take his tube and take the ant and shove this tube down their, her throat and they hammer it down her throat. And then they take, there's this cage there with a head and it's got uh, a head in it with rats eating at the head, the flesh. They take the rats and put them in the tube to go down the ant's throat. And then they take a torch to light it up to make them go further down, you know, to get away from the heat. So they go into the mother's throat and you can see them like moving around her throat area. And then Vicky takes uh, a, a knife and cuts her throat. And then the blood and the rats come out her throat. So 
very graphic, very gruesome. Uh, and then with uh, Sienna, uh, they, 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 you haven't seen Gabby at this point, so you don't know where Gabby's at. They kind of hint that Gabby is the head in the cage with the rats on it, and then they come back and say, no, actually, Gabby's still alive. They pull Gabby out to see all this stuff, and then they put Jonathan's glasses on the head uh, that had the rats on it. So it looks like Jonathan's dead as well. And I'll, I'll talk about that again in a second. Um, so Gabby's watching all this. She sees her dad up on the wall. She sees her mother with this thing stuck in her throat and the rats and her throat slashed. And then Sienna's still tied up. So they ask her something about wanting a gift. And she says, yeah, I'd like to have one last gift. You know, the gift Gabby gave me. And uh, that is the sword. So the little girl tells him to get the, the gift in the back, which is the sword. Art damages her hands, hits him with a, um, a hammer. She opens up the uh, gift, grabs the sword, and then it like lights up. And then she starts kicking um, his ass, Art the Clown's ass. They have a big struggle, a big fight earlier in the movie as well. But she starts, you know, she stabs him in the stomach. At some point, uh, Vicky does something to her and she cuts Vicky's head off. Her head falls into the floor and then um, she starts stabbing. She stabs uh, Art in the stomach and like is coming up with the sword, I mean, you're making it even worse. And then the floor, like Vicky's head dissolves and opens up like this hole to hell. It looks like it's to hell. It's somewhere, another dimension. I think it's like it's hell. And Gabby falls down through it. And she's hanging on. So Sienna has to pull the sword out of art and she puts the other end down the handle down so that Gabby can grab it while she's holding on to the blade part. And then eventually the blade slices through her hand and Gabby falls into hell or this hole or this other dimension. And then art, she turns around art's gone. So that's how the movie ends. Uh, the movie actually ends uh, where she's looking at her hands and they heal. So she has healing power, like she had healing power in the previous movie. So that maybe that goes with some of the angel warrior part that she is, or that she has the power of when she has that sword. Um, and art, they show art at a bus, like a bus stop. And then he gets on a bus and the lady on the bus is reading a book. I think it's called the ninth circle. If you do some research on that mythology wise, it's really deep. And if you go into the ninth circle, the fourth circle, or the fourth fourth uh, level of the ninth circle, it's like the bad of the bad. That's where Satan's at himself. So I don't know if that's kind of how this is leading to with the number four. There also, I believe, was a ninth circle section of a previous uh, Art the Clown uh, movie. It may have been part of Hallow's Eve. I can't remember. So don't take that to the bank. But, um, but Art gets on there, and they look at him. He's looking at them. Next thing you know, he pulls the horn out and blows it. And that's the end of the movie. So um, I said earlier, uh, I gave this a seven. Originally, I gave it a six, like I said earlier. Uh, the children getting killed. And to me, the storyline, I just don't, I'm not a big fan of this, this heaven and hell type thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm so, you know, there's been so much with the Omen and Immaculate and, other movies like that this year, um, you know, the remake of Rosemary's Baby. But I don't know. We're going to see where Damien Leone goes with this on number four. There is a fourth one. It's already been green-lighted uh, to be worked on after this you know, initial um, you know, movie is out and comes to, to streaming, I'm sure, or some kind of, uh, you know, media. Uh, so they will start on it probably for the next year or two, you know, probably come out in 20, in either 2026 or into 2025. Um, but I don't know if I'm a big fan of the way it's going. I don't know. I personally like two a little better. Uh, the Gore wasn't as much as three, but both are really good movies. So don't get me wrong. I've said five is average and I'm giving this a seven now, but if you are a borderline terrifier fan, um, you're, you're probably not going to, like this as much or if you're if you're a fan like like i can take it or leave it you may not like it i love art the clown i love the kills in this they were very gruesome as i mentioned about the 10th time 
But, uh, yeah, the, the whole thing with the kids kind of, I don't know, just me personally. Um, but, again, tell me what you think. Uh, give me some hints and rumors of what you think fourth is going to be about. I think we need more info on the dad. And, uh, you know, they said he was going, you know, he's about to die or he had maybe he had, I can't remember if he had cancer or something or going crazy or whatever. But um, he, you know, he drew all these pictures of, of, you know, great pictures and then evil pictures at the end of it. Um, there are some throwbacks, to some people that had died in the number two that show up in number three. Just a heads up on that, uh, particularly her girlfriend that gave her the drugs is in it. Just a heads up on that. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was worth seeing, see it at the movie theater. Tell me your thoughts. I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. Not my top three, not my top five this year, but still a good movie. And I'm still a terrifier fan and art, the clown fan. Have a good one. Thanks Mike with real dead. Please like comment, subscribe, join us on Facebook as well. And give us your comments. Don't kill me too bad. Uh,